If you enjoy space flight, I'm sure you've enjoyed seeing a Falcon 9 punch through our atmosphere heading to outer space. As it gains altitude and the atmosphere thins, the sky darkens and within a few minutes into the mission, the sky is black. But whether it's a Falcon 9 launching astronauts to the ISS or the footage of the first steps on the moon, all footage from outer space has one thing in common. There appears to be no stars in space. From Earth, when there is no sunlight being scattered by our atmosphere, like at night for example, we can see stars extremely well. So if there is no atmosphere at all in outer space, why don't we see stars? The answer to this question lies in our perspective of space. If you are not one of the fortunate nearly 600 people that have been past the Kármán line into space, you've only experienced space through videos and photos. These cameras that are strapped to rockets to capture these videos and photos are often GoPros or variations of GoPros, which all use electronic shutters. Electronic shutters are used for their compact design and more importantly, their ability to record video. To answer why there are no stars in space, we must understand how an electronic shutter takes photos and videos. Taking the camera apart, we can see the sensor. You may think that the camera exposes the entire sensor at one time, but that is not the case. An electronic shutter scans down the sensor to create an image. This is called rolling shutter and is the key to understanding why we don't see stars in space. Although most large cameras have a varying aperture, mechanical shutter and ISO to control the exposure of each image, cameras like this GoPro with an electronic shutter use this rolling shutter effect to control the exposure. If any of these terms are not familiar to you, I would recommend to pause this video and watch my last video where the fundamental components that make up a digital camera are explained in detail, especially the sensor and ISO. Before understanding how the exposure controls if we can see stars in space, let's first understand what the exposure is. The exposure is how bright the recording is. For example, this is a low exposure and this is a high exposure. Let's look to see how an electronic shutter works to capture an image and control the exposure. Let's begin the sequence of capturing one image and watch what happens. The sensor begins to capture the image at one row of pixels at a time. The sensor will first reset the row and then begin its exposure from the top, making its way down the sensor. As each row gets exposed, it begins to capture light, which will produce the image. The sensor also ends the exposure in this same pattern. This format allows for an even exposure and simplifies the processor's task as it can process the image row by row. The length of time that each row has been exposed for is referred to as the shutter speed. Do not be confused with the frame rate, which I'll get to later. In this example, you can see once a row is turned on, and is capturing light, it will remain on until the shutter speed has been reached, 1 60th of a second in this example. Slow down, this is how the sensor captures every frame. The frame rate is how many images are captured every second. As the frame rate approaches 24 frames a second, the many still photos appear as a video. So remember, the shutter speed is how fast each image is taken and the frame rate is how many of those images are taken every second. Now that we understand what the shutter speed is, let's understand how changing the shutter speed will affect our images. If the object is moving quickly and or is very bright, the camera will automatically reduce the shutter speed allowing each row of the sensor to accumulate less light from the object. For a faster shutter speed of 1 240th of a second or 0 0.0042 of a second, the process is the same, except that the rows are exposed to light for less time. This will darken each image of your video. The second factor that controls how bright each frame is, is the ISO. The ISO is a digital amplification applied to each pixel on the sensor. This amplification will lighten the frame a specific amount to ensure the subject is properly exposed. 
Let's look at applications of the shutter speed and ISO working together to capture and expose an image. Let's take one of our GoPros and aim it at the stars from outer space. The sky is very dark, therefore the camera will automatically adjust its settings to a very high ISO and a very slow shutter speed. This gives each row of the sensor a lot of time for it to accumulate light from the stars. You can see how the dim stars are therefore visible. Let's now look at footage from the Dragon capsule with these same camera settings and see what happens. The Dragon capsule, being in sunlight and white, reflects a lot of light into the camera, appearing very bright. The camera's slow shutter speed allows plenty of light to accumulate on each row of the sensor, which is then amplified from the high preset ISO. As you can see, the Dragon capsule is extremely overexposed. Therefore, the camera sets its ISO very low and the shutter speed very fast, allowing the Dragon capsule to be perfectly exposed. Although now the Dragon capsule is in perfect exposure, the light from the stars have no time to accumulate on the sensor, and of course, no ISO to help amplify the negligible amount of light that did hit the sensor. Therefore, the stars just simply disappear. If you enjoyed this animation, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.